Good evening, fellow Rebels, and welcome back to the Alliance. We're back. We're finally back after, as Yogi pointed out, almost eight entire months of not being available. We have returned, reunited, regrouped, and ready to take on the Empire again. I am one of your hosts, Ali Kenobi, and with me, as always, Grandmaster Yogi. Greetings. If I say greetings and salutations, would that be offensive? No, 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 I was expecting it. That was, that's your thing. That's your spiel. <laughs> I know, but it's like uh, Star Wars purists is like, wait a minute, that's not from the Star Wars universe, mister. <laughs> Hold on a second here, I'm just going into my encyclopedia, see? It's not Star Wars, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? Shenanigans, see? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's funny, it's just funny to me, like, I still hear, have friends that are, like, hardcore, like, into the wars, and if it's not console wars, it's... Well, what, Star Trek is better. No, Star Wars is better. They like, blah blah blah. They, well, I, they're not mutually exclusive. No, 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 no. I, like, I, I've, I've more always more been towards Star Wars than Star Trek. But yeah. I mean, you can, you can like everything. You can like a bit of everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I think what's special about Star Wars is just the fact that it's one of the few, you know, uh, mythos that incorporates sci- science fiction with fantasy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't really think of anything else that has that kind of magical angle to it. You know, it's usually if you go sci-fi, that's it. Sci-fi, and that's it. Nothing else. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I'm more sci-fi than fantasy, but I mean, th- there is fantasy elements. Like I'm, I'm sure even um, Alec Guinness described it as space wizards <laughs> in yeah. Star Wars. Pretty, pretty much. I mean, uh, I, I, I think I love Star Wars for the same reason that I love. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Stargate fan, like especially SG One. And I love yeah. how, like, everything is magic in, in Stargate until they figure out the science behind it. Yeah, yep, that's true. Yep. I, I used to watch Stargate, but it was SG-1 that I watched. I liked the movie as well, but I never went off and watched too much of Atlantis or the other ones. Atlantis is worth uh, revisiting. Even uh, mm-hmm. SGU, as short-lived as it was, it, it was yeah. going in a really good direction. That was a good show. Yeah. Makes me a little sad. I, I have a bit of a void. You know, Stargate left us and Firefly, and now there's like a huge void for space operas. But, you know, we got Star Wars, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I suppose that will do. Um, but anyway, uh, tonight, are we just going with the lineup? Uh, we, we could, or we could catch up. We could do some banter. I mean, yeah, Peter, Peter Capaldi's not here, so the banter's okay. Peter Capaldi isn't here, no. But yeah, um, well, we had uh, we we have had this quite a while with the season one of Rebels come and gone since we last done a show. Um, yeah. Season season two is uh, about a month away. Fourteenth of October it starts. So we got good, we got good it. timing. We got good timing then. Yeah, we got some good timing. We had uh, the Force Friday recently. We've had very many novels and obviously if you if you want to see what we've spoken about before we just uh two episodes ago if you're going in order uh not in chronol not in the time space of time but uh two episodes ago we had an interview with john jackson miller myself and yogi that's actually it was further back i think wasn't it no it was oh it was, it was yeah like a- oh man i thought we had more episodes since then yeah that was in december and then we had a january episode and then uh we uh, maintain radio silence, at least on this yeah, show. We, we had to, <laughs> to keep the Death Star plants in. It's true. We didn't want them to uh, triangulate our lo- location or whatever they do in space. No, we didn't. <laughs> so, 
Um, we had we had John Jackson Miller on for a new dawn, and since then we've had about five novels released. Have you checked out any of those yet, Yogi? I've uh, gandered at them. I have uh, perused them. I haven't read them fully, but uh, oh gosh, you know, I'll be honest. Like uh, I'm overwhelmed between all the stuff going. Like we had a huge video game uh, drought, right? Mm. And that's a big mm-hmm. thing for us because you do 42 level one, and I do all the stuff over. Yeah. You know, the rest of the stuff with Geeky Antics, and, and I also do some stuff on all games as well, like writing reviews for all games. And, yeah. oh gosh, I don't know, I, I know you've, you've been overwhelmed, but then, and not just the video game stuff, now we have all these video games coming out after having a drought, and then fall TV season's coming, and then if it was that wasn't enough, you know, content to consume, I've been getting back into anime, because that's the ebb and flow <laughs> of my life. And yeah. anime is a downward spiral. Have, did I, I don't think I've ever asked you. Have you ever got into anime? Um, it's not really my thing. Like when I was younger, I watched Giver, a couple of Givers, and I mean, obviously Pokemon at some point, but mm, not nothing really like uh, Attack and Titan or the or the things that everyone's loving these days now. Have you ever like Have you ever been curious, or are you just afraid to open up that can of worms? No, it's not. It just doesn't. I I just can't get into it. I've tried anime. I've tried even Akira. It didn't really appeal to me. Like it just, it's not my sort of thing. You probably haven't found the right one, or is it? Because for some people, I know they get hung up on the medium. It's like it's a cartoon. How serious can it be? But True. it's a very serious storytelling medium. Um, and I like what's cool about you know Japanese animation is that they take things from Western culture and other, you know, just global culture. And and then mm. tell it from you know in their style. So you see references to like Star Wars and uh, ha- things like Harry Potter. It is actually an an anime or anime if you prefer. That's uh yeah. <laughs> that's literally just Harry Potter in Japanese animation format. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, so you know I, I, it's really fun. It's really fun, and I think people don't realize like this is like a serious medium for the Japanese. You know, and that's Japanese mm. either. But you know that's the origin of it. You know, and yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, even Rebels takes kind of a lot of its cues from Japanese animation. It does actually. Stones. We were talking about that yeah. before. I think now I'm getting a tra- strange sense of deja vu. We said how mm-hmm. it kind of has that some of the tropes and stylings of, of anime, which I actually love. Yeah, that, to uh, me that uh, makes uh, it really uh, cool. Yeah, it's good. And like, I have watched some, like I said, the Giver series, which actually the movie starred Mark Ham- Hamill for your Star Wars tie in. Uh, the live action movie of Giver had Mark Hamill in it. But uh, I had the, the video of that. Um, I had Akira when I was younger. There's a few other things uh, that I've tried. Uh, I'm not so much into the anime still. Like, well, it's obviously manga, the graphic novels of, like. Yeah. Um, Gundam and things like that, but no, anime is nothing I've really tried. Like, I, I'm not big into it. Fraser, uh, who used to be in 42 Level One, also he's he's big into his anime things, and Andy's watching the Full Metal Alchemist at the moment. But for myself, oh, that's a good one. I stay away from anime, not because I'm scared, just because it doesn't. I can't. I can't concentrate. I don't know what it is. I think it's just you. You, pro- you probably just. Deep down inside, you're like, if I just get into it, I won't be able to fully commit because you, <laughs> you have a full plate. There's so much content to, to consume, and anime yeah. is like its own massive thing on its own. Mm. So yeah, I, I understand. It's it's overwhelming. I mean, I barely watch t- you know any TV, and then when I do, it's like, oh my god, I hate myself, and then I start binge watching. <laughs> so well, I mean, it's a trap. Netflix has got its own anime set. It's it's a trap. <laughs> has has its own anime section now, so. There's plenty yeah. of being available. Yeah, that's dangerous. They did that. And, yeah. ugh. You, know, you know, it's also like things like Akira. Like, while I love Akira, that's not something I would use as an entry point. It's really hard. Like, like, that's more for like the hardcore. Mm. There's ones out there that I think are, are good entry points. And it depends what you like. If you want something lighthearted, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Beezlebub is hilarious. You know, that's more of a gag anime. It's more of a parody anime that makes fun of other anime. If you want something with a, a combination of action and, you know, you know, romance and some feels, you want to get some feels, uh, I reckon, I really recommend uh, Air Gear. That's an awesome series. And it's not a lot to get into either. But anyway, I'm derailing yeah. us. <laughs> this, is, this is us catching up, folks. We haven't had a chance <laughs> to talk for a while. <laughs> 
yeah yeah so we'll, we'll use the opportunity here just like we could have but um yes uh we'll get into what people are here for the star wars talk and we're going to start off with the star wars battlefront game that's upcoming in november now i've got this ready to oops what you do i wondered why the star wars music filled my ears there but a youtube video opened up there as i was talking to you and uh, it just happened to be a link to star wars and i thought you were playing a sound clip there and i was like okay so um... <laughs> i wouldn't troll you that this early in the show <laughs> yeah so um battlefront is the new game from ea who are taking uh, control for most of or if not all the new canon games because this is apparently one of the canon games that they're bringing out because as we know what happened with the old legends in the eu but we're not going to get into that in this show um battlefront is coming out in uh, november and i have it ready and lined up to download it well hopefully before midnight to play on that day so you you, um, you pre-ordered it already uh, yeah on the playstation network store because it's the fastest way to get it <laughs> oh wait was that a slight at the xbox one sir <laughs> no, 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 because I have an Xbox <laughs> One now, so of course I would be playing it on EA Access a week before. However, mm. most of my friends obviously have the uh, PlayStation 4, so that will be my main console for it. However, I'll, I'll probably get a few games in with the Yogi on the, the old Xbox One um, before it comes out. But yes, this is arriving, and we're also getting some Force Awakens free DLC in December if you pre-order, which is awesome. And... Uh, like, as much as EA annoys me, like, you can't help but be excited with Star Wars games. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the main point for tonight, for this section, the open beta yogi. Yes, which uh, apparently all our uh, sources are kind of tight-lipped about. Well, we thought they were tight-lipped, they just don't know anything. They're just as clueless as we are. <laughs> the only thing confirmed, I mean... right? What's the, the only thing confirmed is that, uh, that you don't need to sign up for it. It's an open beta, like in the in the truest sense, everybody could jump into it. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no stipulation, right? No 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 catch. Am I wrong? Nope. nope. Okay. Nope. You don't have to pre-order or anything. It's a case of it's for everybody. I think they're doing it to more stress test for day one, which is a good idea. Rather Thank than God. Those beaters. Yeah. Because I I'm tired of all these big studio releases that undervalue multiplayer or underestimate how many people just want to play multiplayer. And then yeah. they release a game, and then the first day, first week, sometimes like first month, the, the servers can't handle the capacity, as if they didn't expect that. Oh, that drives me batty. <laughs> I don't really care about single player stuff that much anymore. I, I, for me, multi, uh, video games are a p way to catch up with friends, take a break mm -hmm. from work, and I, and I yep. want to play the multiplayer stuff. That's it. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one's it's multiplayer focused, but there are some offline and co-op missions that have got story elements to them, so they'll be interesting to try. Co-op is good. Co -op. Yeah, yeah, yeah co-op is co great. I'll, I'll I'll enjoy that with my kids for sure. As far as I'm aware, the level that they're letting people play is going to be the Hoth battle. Uh, level and Darth Vader's going to be an unlockable hero for well if you're fighting with Imperials in that game so that'll be quite interesting to see how they work it I like the idea that they've not made it which I was worried at first that it was going to be first person um, first person perspective only uh, they're doing it third person like the old games if you've ever played Battlefront on Playstation 2 or PSP was the last one I played Elite Squadron I think um then you'll know what to expect. You pick a side and you try and conquer the universe or save the universe, depending. But I, I'm going to go Stormtrooper. I have to. You could go... Uh, you, could also, uh, you said Darth Vader, but they also have Luke Skywalker available in open beta. Oh, I didn't know about that news. Yeah. See, see I've got a guy from EA that uh, is sometimes nice. He recently sent me Madden 16 for the Xbox and there, there, there's a there's to de detour a wee bit more uh, on the Xbox. I got Madden and I got it for the PlayStation uh, sent from EA, and I prefer the Xbox version. Hey, cool! No, oh, yeah, wait, so... you got Madden? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, now I'm mm -hmm. gonna have to get it too, so I can play with my buddy. Because <laughs> I feel like if we don't have games to play together, we'll never really t get a chance to talk to each other. I just hear yes. you. I'm 42 level one. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, Ali, my friend. I wonder what he's up to these days. I guess I'll just listen to the show. <laughs> Our schedules do not line up. It's not even the yeah. the five hour difference. It's just craziness going on. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But I mean, we'll, we'll catch up at some point. But anyway, uh, Star Wars Battlefront Open Beta, I don't know if there's been a date announced yet, but I would imagine it would be either this month or early next month, considering the game's out, is it November 19th? Uh, 17th, for us at least. So, yeah. Wait, that's more, it's worldwide, right? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Could be. I'm sure it's the 19th here. Is it? Oh. You gotta wait two Very days. Fun. Yeah. You gotta yeah, have to tune out all social media so you don't get any. Sp- you don't have it spoiled for you. Yeah. Or well, I'll be playing it for a week before on EA Access. Oh, that's Xbox. right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that EA Access, <laughs> what? Five bucks a month? Ten bucks a month? Yeah. It's really good value. Is it ten or five? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, over here. It's three ninety nine a month, which is unreal because you get access to like ten full games plus all the trials. Jesus, and and uh, and the one thing that I like about it is that it doesn't treat it like a demo. Like when I got Madden as the trial off the EA Access, it let me keep all my save files for the main game, my progress, and it unlocked achievements before I even owned the full game. Yeah, I noticed that the when they opened up the vault uh, a couple months back during E3, mm-hmm. I had to get advantage of it. It had all my save games, but it did glitch out once. I don't know if I just derped. Mm. I, mean, I don't know if, because I think I tried to open the game from my main dashboard instead of from within EA, the EA Access Vault. I don't know how that yeah. works, but it didn't, it lost my save file somehow for Battlefield 4. But I think I'm about to get into that because as much as we, you know, have pro- issues with EA with, with, with Just Cause, they do have yeah. so many good games. Uh, ugh. They do. I have they to do. do it. Five bucks a month, even me being a cheap bastard, I, I can't really say no <laughs> to that. Yeah, I think it's twenty for the whole year or three ninety nine for the month. That's what it is here. And I know a few of my friends are going to get the month just to get uh, the weeks early Battlefront. <laughs> Wait, you could do a yearly for like a fraction of the cost as well. Well, it's like nineteen ninety nine over here for a year for a whole year sub. So. so that's probably like twenty five thirty bucks for us or something. I think we're still behind yep. the the pounds. Yeah, yeah. The U.S. dollar that is. Yeah. So, hmm. Well, I got some more information. Uh, a, a quote that's a little less vague. This is uh, from one of the folks behind the game. Uh, who is it? Who's the quote from? I don't know. Someone that's involved with the game, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, sure. Very professional here. Coming early yep. October to PlayStation. So they said early October. So that's a little more specific. Uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and, or- and an Origin service for PC. Star Wars Battlefront Beta is a technical test and will feature the Walker Assault on Hoth. A 40-player multiplayer battle featuring Rebels and the Empire. That's, that's insane. That's insane. That's twenty. That's that's like 20 a side. Yeah, and, and and I don't know if this is true, but I heard it's PvP and PvE, kind of like they're doing with Halo 5. So there's going to be right. like stuff happening with NPCs as well. Uh, a bit like what they've done with Titanfall. Yeah, which I like. Mm. I like Titanfall. Mm. So It was okay. It was, yeah, I just <laughs> I had it for a very short time, and you went out and got it again, and I was like, mm, I traded it, but I can re I can re get it on EA Access, I suppose. Yeah, let's play. It's on EA Access. You just gotta devote the hard drive space. It's it's a fun game. I think it's a good. It's a, at the very least, it's a palate cleanser. I won't get into debate about it, but I understand why people didn't like it as much. But you know what? You gotta give them props because they made all the DLC available for, for everyone. Yeah, that is, I suppose that is quite good. Uh, it was basically like a free season pass for everybody. Yeah, and there's a lot of content there and a lot of ways to play the game. The one thing that really annoyed me about that game is I was looking forward to it so much. I read a story and I didn't remi- I forgot what month it was. And it said there was Optimus Prime skins coming for your Titans. And then I, I looked back into it when I was getting my Xbox One and it said uh, that was an April Fool's. I was like, oh, uh... why? <laughs> Why do things like that? The developer did put that out. Mm, no, it was yeah, actually it was. It was like um, it was on Titanfall's website saying that they were bringing out Optimus Prime skins. So, ooh, that was a bold move. Like Rockstar Games might be able to get away with, with something like that, but <laughs> yikes. Yeah. Well, oh, um, we've got Tiger Claw here. Hi, Tiger Claw. <laughs> he said, "Which version are we getting?" I'm getting. I- I'm gonna have to get Xbox One now so I can play with all my homies. All the, all the yeah. talk about it, you know, I mean, I could get on the PC and get the prettiest version, but, yeah. you know, as much as I'm PC Master Race, the convenience of console is, is, has won me back over. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll be getting it on PS4, but for the first week, I'll probably play an Xbox One. And uh, since Tiger Claw is here, I just remembered Yogi. Andy's promised us that uh, when Battlefront comes out, he'll be joining us for a whole episode of Rebels to do a Battlefront special. Oh God! Now I have to get the game. Oh wait, so which 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 version did you uh, pre-order? PS4. But is it like an edition you got, or just a regular edition? Uh, there's only two. There's no, like the reason I got it digital was because they're not bringing out an edition with like a uh, statue or anything. There, there's just two editions, and the deluxe edition is like more money, and all you get is in-game items. And it's uh. like if I can earn earn them in in-game anyway, I'm not gonna. I'm not paying the money. Yeah, the nice exclusive. Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, yeah. the thing, I I'd rather still get physical though, cause I don't have I don't like installing the entire game on my hard drive, and I like having a disc and smelling the you know the new game smell. Yeah. I, don't know. I guess I'm weird. See, I used to like them. It's like uh, when the instruction booklet was in them. And that's why we called the first part of Forty Two instruction booklet because nah. you used to always read the instructions. Yep. you know, and <laughs> now, now they, they don't have it. now it's, they don't have any inserts yeah. in there. Once in a while though. See, people don't know this. They still sometimes like sneak in stuff in there. Like my brother uh, got Elder Scrolls online. He's not a gamer at all. All of a sudden, he's become a gamer, and he got Elder Scrolls yeah. online. And somehow he got a pre-order version because he bought physical, and it came with uh, some codes in there. So he's got yeah. like uh, thirty, forty dollars worth of content for free. And um, <laughs> something that's something that was what happened with with physical, and, and also with physical, you tend to get better deals. So there's still benefits to it. But I understand, you know, digital is just convenient because just install it, uninstall it, and it's always there in your library. You don't have to worry about losing the disc or scratching it or breaking it, your dog eating it. I get it. Yeah, and and a lot of the time for me, I get bored with a game, trade it, and then somebody else buys it again, and, like, I'll end up having to rebuy the game. Whereas if I buy it digital, I can remove it from the library and get it anytime I want. Yeah, and it's really, it's really nice being able to just... Change, switch games without having to swap a disc out. So <laughs> yeah, it's more it's more the lazy convenience than actually yeah. the, anything else. But I mean, it, the other thing is, it's uh, if you buy a game after it's out, obviously go physical because you might get it cheaper. Like digital, if you get it, you you're going to get it before anyone else because it unlocks at midnight, it pre-installs. Yeah. So even if you go out at midnight and you manage to get home in five minutes, you're still going to have to install that game. Whereas I can sit at home and it can be raining outside on a lunch night. Um, for example, Batman Arkham Knight. And on the Xbox, it installs the whole thing like it, ages before, like for Gears of War, it done that. But on the um, on the PlayStation 4, you get an actual countdown. And watching that countdown go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, myself and Andy were messaging each other. Too excited just because of a countdown occurring on the screen. That's like the water cooler effect, or as some people call it, the zeitgeist. You want to be part of the zeitgeist, it's like, I'm the first kid on the block to play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's more Star Wars, just the impatience with Star Wars. But we'll move off games, and we'll get into Rebels, because that's the main... Well, we uh, got one Rebels. more one more bit, though. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it excellent. says, the Walker Assault will also give you the chance to play as two of the most iconic characters in Star Wars, as we mentioned earlier, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. And... Mm -hmm. Boba the beta Fett. will cool. also feature they said our survival mission on Tatooine where you oh. and a rebel friend must mm -hmm. fight back waves of imperial imperial so forces that sounds pretty cool it sounds almost like horde mode from gears of war yep and there's a third mode called drop zone that will be available as well um and they didn't really mention details on that so there's a lot of oh gosh you guys are killing me there's so many <laughs> games coming out i might have to pre-order this <laughs> <sighs> It's funny because I've been torn, and I know we're going to move on to Rebels, but yeah, I've been torn because there's so many good games coming out right now for the holiday season. I don't know. Why don't why don't any developers come out with summer blockbusters? Seriously. I don't, I don't know. It would, make, it would make complete sense. Like, for example, this week, uh, Until Dawn, well, the past few weeks, and Metal Gear Solid 5, Until Dawn could have come out in July and cleaned up. Exactly, because there was nothing huge at that time. Yeah. You know, no. unless you count indie games. I mean, I love indie games, but they're not. Yeah. They're not huge releases. They're not, they're not blockbusters. They're not going to be charting in the the stores when you go in. But it's crazy that every developer just seems. Maybe they just enjoy their summer holidays. <laughs> I I guess so. I, I, it's weird. But uh, one last bit of gaming stuff. Uh, we we're talking about the new Turtle Beach headsets. Uh, the Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront Sand Trooper headsets. Yeah, these are some nice headsets. Now I've I've got um a really good headset, but these ones look quite impressive. And Turtle Beach are 
probably one of the best, if not the best headset you can buy. What are you thinking, Yogi? Have you got these in your Amazon basket already? Well, these remind me a lot of the past uh, Turtle Beach headsets I've had, and, and I can tell they're going to be very comfortable because they got the little foam cup. But yeah. I hope that they... I have a, 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 a bit of a gripe. Sound quality on Turtle Beach, fantastic. But I feel like their mm -hmm. durability, like their build quality, has gone down a bit in the past few years. Because yeah. I've gone through Turtle Beaches. It doesn't matter what, whether I get a $60 pair or a $300 pair. It's like... They're made out of, like, uh, Tiki Tac or something. I don't know, gingerbread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I've, they have had Star Wars ones before. I've seen the Darth Vader ones and uh, Stormtrooper ones, but um, these new, newer ones for the Force Awakens, uh, the Rebel Alliance ones are the ones that I'm looking at that are really nice. Yeah, the, you can get it's the, tempting. The, the Imperial ones with the Battlefront, they're nice too, but... Oh, sure. I have a feeling I'm going to be spending a lot more money than I should be in the next <laughs> month or two. The Tire Claw, had, I wanted to tell everybody to know that if you pre-order the game, you get the Battle of Jakku uh, DLC first. Yeah. Is it Jakku or Jakku? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. I always end up pronouncing things wrong. And, well, Rebels did as well. Like, you remember Canon and then Kanan. It's now Kanan. So I'm not sure. We'll need to just wait and see what happens when it comes to Jakku. I'm going with Jakku just now. Jakku sounds more official to me. It has a little sci-fi twang to it. We'll go with that. Jakku. Yeah, we'll go with Jakku. So, any more? We've got a bit more video games coming up later because I'm going to talk some Disney Infinity later on for people that like the video game chat. But um, we'll yeah, we'll the, yeah, we'll table it. Yeah, we'll table the video games up for now because if not, uh, we'll go off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, as you may know, um, we have been uh, covering Star Wars Rebels up until, I think it was episode 9. And recently, obviously, we have arrived back to do some more Star Wars for you. And uh, Idiot's Array was the most recent one after Path of the Jedi. However, if you want to catch up on our thoughts, uh, full thoughts on these episodes, I'm going to be covering them on the site where Last week I posted uh, my review on Idiot's Array, which was our first look at Lando, uh, voiced by um, uh, Billy D. Williams, obviously. And uh, we're going to be doing the last three or four episodes. So if you want to check that out, it's on rebelscast.co.uk or starwarsrebelscast.tk, and that's all our reviews there. Um, I've also done a couple of unboxings for the Star Wars Disney Infinity Special Edition, and uh, that is on our... Uh, 42 level 1, if you google 42 level 1 on Twitter, you can see my unboxing of those and let me know what you think on our Twitter at Rebelscast UK. But yes, we've had the finale of Rebel Season 1 and Yogi was most excited about it. He thought it was one of the best episodes and I, I tend to agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I just watched it today, to be honest, uh, and it's just fresh yeah. in my mind. <laughs> yep. Yep, and uh, there was a lot going on. It was like a three-parter, which started with Call to Action, and uh, the Rebels decided they were going to send out a message to urge people to fight against the Empire. And Tarkin, as we all know from the recent book and Darth Vader's lapdog, or was he the one holding Vader's leash? That's what he was. He is uh, one of the more evil ones. We've seen him in the Clone Wars before he was on the, the other side, before we had the Rebellion. And the Inquisitor and Agent Callus are sent out to get Kanan back. Uh, and the, the, they are successful in their mission. This was kind of more of a setup episode, Call to Action was. I'm helping Yogi out here because he's only just rewatched <laughs> re -watched the final. So basically, it was a setup episode after we found out about um, Ezra's parents being dead and gone, which may or may not be true. Because I've got another theory I'm going to throw in once I've finished Call to Action Summary Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 because I watch uh, some of the stuff in between, but it's not fresh in my mind, so it's like all a blur. I have to watch from episode 9 through 13 yeah. again. Yeah, 9 was the first one with Lando. That's where we basically stopped the, the show, so um, we're back now, though, finally. But um, yeah, basically they send out their uh, message, and Tarkin uh, wants the tower destroyed, but the message does get out 
Uh, it ends the broadcast though when it's destroyed, so they don't know if it got out to anyone at all. Um, Kanan ends up dis- uh, invading the Imperial Tower to do it, and he stays back basically. He gets captured to save everybody else because uh, Tarkin gives him the option to save his friends basically, um, or basically has to sacrifice himself. And Kanan, being the hero of the show, sacrifices himself and we finally get the mystery of fulcrum in these episodes uh hmm. the cur- the curtain is pulled up pu- pull pulled down from what we had uh what do you think of the reveal before we go into it pretty darn awesome but you don't get a full <laughs> you don't get a full i feel like you don't get a the full impact of that reveal until season two opens up am i wrong on saying that well, we do get the reveal, but yeah, you don't see too much of her until um, the first episode, Siege of Lothal, of season two, um, which we're going to get into after this. But yes, we find out it is Ahsoka Tano from the Clone Wars, who we kind of suspected that was one of my yeah. predictions because we'd, see, we'd seen Ahsoka's logo in some of the crates she's, and she's things. Quite a, she's quite a looker. Hey, baby. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a lot older now. Um, than she was, so she's fully grown, and it turns out that she's one of the founding members of the Rebellion, which I'm okay with, considering I'm a huge Force Unleashed fan, and I like the story in that, but Ahsoka doing it kind of makes sense, um, because obviously she was uh, trained by uh, Anakin, who obviously became Darth Vader, Yeah, and... She, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute, but there's a there's a moment where Ahsoka and Vader, when they become aware of each other, that is that's, really cool. That's what I'm talking about. Like the the reveal yeah. doesn't have the full impact until that moment. To me, then it's like, oh, that's right. And yeah, then I started getting did. flashbacks. I'm like, I, I'm like, I really want to rewatch Clone Wars now. And now I feel like playing yeah. the uh, Force Unleashed games. And ah, damn it, <laughs> too much. So basically, um, the the Ghost Crew go after Kanan. And uh, Tarkin's going to transfer Kanan to Mustafar, um, where no Jedi returns, as you know. Uh, and then, basically, the last episode we had was one of the, I mean, one of the best episodes. And I don't think we've really had a weak episode for this entire season, Yogi. Yeah, I can't think of a, of any stinker. I, it never felt like uh, there was any filler. I mean, then again, I, I think that's why they probably paced it out the way they did is because, you know, they took the break and it's like, oh, man, why why are they doing this? But that's why, for the quality control. So, yeah, I like, I, I like, I have enjoyed every single one of the episodes. Yeah. I think the so only they, silly episode they had was the one where they went on that mission to get a, a, a fruit that's, or something that supposedly didn't exist on the planet. Remember that one? Oh uh, yeah, there was like a wild. Right it was a wild goose chase. I know you. I think that was that one was of the episode year. two. That was fight or flight. Yeah, that was kind of a. Uh, but that was a more get to know the characters and some wacky Disney adventure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was pretty yeah. zany. It was, I, I was just waiting for Jar Jar Binks to show up. I'll tell you something though. For this <laughs> season, like compared to season one of, uh, oh, I hope not. But I hope, uh, I, I hope he doesn't show up in anything ever again. But in Clone Wars season one, there was a lot more standalone filler episodes than uh, any other season of Clone Wars. So uh, in comparison, it's been a strong season. Um, Vader finally uh, comes full force into. Um, the Rebels universe because Tarkin. Tells Agent Callus there's been another agent selected by Emperor Palpatine to destroy the rebels, and that agent is known as Darth Vader. Um, we get a fight. Well, with... they don't even call him an agent. They say there's another <laughs> weapon that's been deployed, yeah. like they, completely that's... making him impersonal. <laughs> yeah, he's not even a man anymore. But um, yeah, basically, the final episode there is one of the best lightsaber battles I've seen in any Star Wars, and that oh, was man. it. Was kind of reminiscent of the. Darth Maul versus Qui Gon and Obi Wan in Episode One, and that was the Inquisitor versus Kanan and Ezra. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, uh, Kanan kind of gets pushed aside like Obi Wan. Uh, no, Ezra gets pushed aside. Uh, Kanan picks up the two lightsabers, and from what we gather, it's the death of this Inquisitor, and um, because he falls down, but. 
in my mind, like he was too strong a character. And I know we might get another Inquisitor and we probably will get more, but the fact that he looked so iconic and he was tied into a lot of merchandise, I would kind of hope that he's not fully dead. And as we know yeah. with Darth Maul, no one's truly dead. Yep. No one's truly I call dead. that the su- um, supernatural effect. If you watch Supernatural, uh, no one really dies on that show, apparently. What's that, on season 50 now? or? <laughs> uh... Yeah, pretty close. I think season <laughs> twenty three or something. So it's up, it's up there. But <laughs> but actually, the, the the great part about this fight was that uh, Kenan was kind of holding back. You could tell he was holding back because you know the, one of the consistent themes they've had throughout the show is that he's weighed down by the way the Clone Wars went down and all the Jedi's died, and he doesn't want to lose any people anymore. So that's why they've they've become like this ragtag group of kind of glorified bandits. You know, because he doesn't, he wants to lay low, and he doesn't want to get into that position again. Where he has to choose between his life or someone else's. You know, he doesn't want to lose any more friends, right? So yeah, when he, true. when he sees Ezra get slammed, really, it wasn't he was just get pushed aside. He got slammed really hard. I was like, yeah, yeah he's K- dead. Kenan, actually, I forgot. Kenan, I, I didn't watch this in preparation. I'm going by memory, but Kenan thought he was dead and yeah. turned it up, turns it up a gear. Yep, he's like, he's like. Uh, he, 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 what was the words he's, he used? He told Inquisitor, uh, you're going to regret uh, doing that. And he said, why? Because uh, now you uh, don't have anyone to die for you. He said, no, yeah. because now I have nothing to fear. And then he just went, just like Goku, yeah. Super Saiyan on him, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing it back to um, the anime for you, Ali. And- <laughs> we'll bring you to the anime yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'll never join you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the dark trouble. side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, when Kanan gets back up, it's one of the best lightsaber fights, like be it live action or not. I would love to see see live action Kanan, but the way I see this series going, I can't see Kanan surviving to the end. I think his story uh... will end. I could see Ezra showing up for some reason. I could see him showing up in the movies, and I've got here. This is where I'll tie my theory in, Yogi. Right? If you remember back to the the episode Empire Day. Hmm. I'm listening. Um, that, sorry, that was where um, Ezra told them all it was his birthday. That was the day he was born, right? Yeah. Which is the day the, day the uh, Galactic Empire got created by Palpatine, right? Right. Who else, who else do we know in the Star Wars universe getting born on that day? An Empire Day. Wasn't it? Yeah. Look, what? Wasn't it Luke? Yeah, Luke and Leia are born the exact same day yeah. and the exact same year as Ezra. And... From the way Disney are playing it, I don't think they're doing that like just by uh, chance. I don't think that. I think there's more to that. There's going to be more to that. You know, and I think another reason, a simple reason that you know we may not see uh, Kenan survive, but uh, Ezra surviving is because there's a lot of hesitation in Kenan. You know, I, I think he has too many inner demons to sort out, and if he doesn't like get his game face on right now, you know, yeah. they're, they're gonna exploit that. That's what the yeah. that's what the empire does, and I mean Darth Vader fights freaking dirty. <laughs> yeah, does he? Um, so if you've been reading um, Kane in the last pad of listeners, you'll know that obviously it's telling us a bit about his backstory, which is telling you what Yogi's been pointing out that Kanan's apprehensive for a reason. He escaped the Jedi Temple when uh, Order sixty six happened, and Anakin slaughtered all the rest of the Padawan learners, um, yeah. and his. His Jedi Master died to save him, and he chose a life of basically what Han Solo. He's basically a Han Solo style Jedi. That's how I see him because he got into a life of smuggling, working in seedy bars. In the book A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller, he um he was a bouncer in a nightclub, you know, and he just lived completely opposite to what the Jedi would to try and forget about the atrocities that happened. So I do reckon that if uh, Kanan, like you said, doesn't step it up, but I don't reckon that will be to the final season. Uh, the other thing that I've had thoughts about is Ezra. Uh, he's showed signs of it, and as did Anakin at that age as well. The dark side and Ezra. I've got a feeling he could turn at some point. You know, I think that's what they're leading us to believe, but I wouldn't be yep. surprised if Kanan would be the one that turns to the dark side. Now, I know that sounds yeah. crazy. Okay, I'll hear you. But just think about what the Inquisitor's last words were. I think the Inquisitor almost sacrificed himself to have Kanan submit to the anger inside of him. Yeah, that's a good point. He said there are things far worse than death. 
Exactly. And he <sighs> dropped himself off that ledge. Yeah. Like, oh. Kanan sp spared him, but he still killed himself. The dude still killed himself. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I want you to, like, have this haunt you, you know. I, they, they're playing some mind games, man. There's a greater, yeah. there's a greater end game in here. Yeah, you could be right in that one if it's a whole turnaround. My other, my last final, we, we don't want to fill the show with theories. It's not the X-Files we're covering. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sabine, okay. Not much is known about her past. What if she's actually a plant for the Empire? Dude, I would so I would be so angry. Ah, <laughs> oh, cause I love her so much. Yep. And she's so playful. Like, if her playfulness and almost like her innocence and she's a bit, she's actually not as graceful as we thought she was at first. Cause she does, she's done oh, no. some silly things. Um, yeah. if that's all an act. Dude, yeah. then I guess she is a woman, so <laughs> yep. probably gotta expect that. <laughs> and there's got to be a story behind her Mandalorian armor. She didn't just find yes. that. I mean, you know. maybe she was a bounty hunter in training or something. Who knows? Well, like young Boba Fett, or maybe as the rumors are saying, she's actually Boba Fett's child. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh man, it, I like how it just comes full circle. Cause we've t this is like reminiscent of our initial conversations when yep. we were just getting to know the characters. Yep. And speaking of which, since uh, Ross is not here, Chopper, yep. yes. Yep. Chopper was awesome. At the end of this episode, Chopper saves the day by phoning in the Calvary, shall we say. Yo, oh, and Zeb was quick to write him off. It's like, did that tin can abandon us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, he if he, he contacts uh, is it ba is it Princess Leia's dad? It's Bail Organa, yeah, that she contacted and yeah. uh, Fulcrum and the rest of them show up with the rebe rebel fleet and uh, they they help them escape finally in the last minutes as the space battle is going on and again like it's one of the better things like they're doing it so well in this show even better than Clone Wars I would say um because they're taking the best of Clone Wars and tying it in to finish it off and they're also. Uh, taking the original trilogy and linking them in a way better than any other medium's done. Um, the space battle in this, the lightsaber uh, fight with Kanan and Ezra and the Inquisitor, it was, it's, this was, you're right, Yogi, this was one of the best episodes. This was the episode we were looking for. You know what? I think what would be a great service to our community is if mm -hmm. you could put together the definitive guide to Clone Wars, like, with, mm -hmm. like an episode guide that just focuses on the episodes with the real meat of the story. And then maybe, yeah, that... you know, we could go mm -hmm. back and re-listen to those episodes, rewatch those episodes, rather, and then, like, yep. uh, you know, in, in the off-season, talk about Clone Wars. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's what we should do. Yes. Anyway, uh, enough of Clone Wars. We need to get back to Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels Season 1 in a nutshell. What did you think, Yogi, overall? Fantastic. For, except yeah. for like maybe the the three or the, f the four episodes that probably breeze through, um, yeah. Because I, I can't really speak to them completely, but like, I, like you said, there wasn't a single throwaway episode. It was just everything felt very deliberate. Everything was setting up something else, and it just ties together so well. You almost forget at times that it is a cartoon. Um, yeah, I would agree. You know, like with, even when you know um, they didn't show the um, the rebel uh, starfighters that much, the pilots. No. no. But when no, they but do show their faces, did you notice yeah. they look more human? Like it's actually, yeah, you're actually I, watching a live-action movie? Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, I think the reason why they didn't show them so much was because of, obviously, season two is going to have this whole different feel um, to it. Uh, things are coming more forefront. And instead of working on the fringe, you can we'll, we'll branch this into our season two premiere talk. Season two premiere, obviously, was... Was it June? July, you guys got it? We got it over here. I think it was June. Uh, yeah, I think it was June. Yeah, because uh, it, cause it, took a, it had commercials for something coming up in July, as I was mentioning earlier. And I was like, whoa, that's a long hiatus. <laughs> yeah. No, this was uh, Siege of Lothal. And it had a completely different feel because season one, it was just basically, it almost felt like what you imagine Han and Chewie were doing before um, they met up with uh, Obi-Wan and Luke in the cantina. Um, it's kind of a fringe group and okay, Hera is getting information from the likes of Fulcrum and the Rebellion, but 
that you don't really see the rebellion as you did in like a new hope and emperor strikes back and well as jedi as well you, you just seen the ghost crew and i think that was good that they took these episodes just to um show you the characters and get to know them before it introduced all these other ones like ahsoka we'll probably end up seeing admiral akbar at some point um maybe mon mothma who, who knows uh bail organ is obviously a big part of it too but uh season two premiere started uh us off with um the rebels basically more or less joining up they were on a one of the big re- rebel cruisers and uh they were planning an attack uh on they were planning a hit in one of the imperial strongholds now, i mean it, give me a second to remind myself of this yogi but you did you watch this today yes so i'm letting you, you run with it before i jump in because i'm getting excited <laughs> so uh the seizure lethal the big thing for me was darth vader was advertised he was like if you've seen the post of this darth vader standing and in, in ahsoka's below him and you've got the rebel crew i thought yeah it's going to be like the season one of rebels but we're not going to see much of vader i was wrong vader is the main villain for the whole <laughs> episode it was awesome i was surprised uh, i'm like wow so soon damn yeah and they had james Earl jones voice in them again which is awesome um and it just it was just amazing to see it it felt like a proper movie like more so than even the clone wars animated movie that came out before the the season the series started of that um they get a call for help that's what it was and uh Basically, she's going to give away Imperial secrets. Yeah, it was um, a, a defector. It was one of the, uh, yeah. the ministers, right? Yeah, that's right. Makita, or whatever her name was. Um, where basically, Lothal was under siege, and yeah, Vader. Now, I want you to clear something up for me, because before we get into the full scope of what happened, yeah, was she privy to how she was a pawn in this plan? Was she, was she going along with the plan, or was she... Truly de- the, defecting. Uh, it's hard to tell, or am I just going crazy? I don't know, because her sister worked for the Empire, as far as I remember. No. Yes. She No, I she was be- an Imperial herself, but I feel like oh, with yeah. with a lot of the Imperials, um, I feel like when you the more we see of the Empire, there's a lot of folks mm-hmm. that are, you can tell are just along for the ride. They're not truly evil. So you can't truly yeah. hate the Empire because a lot yeah. of the people are just like, well, there's unity, and I guess that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think a lot of these folks realize how evil the people behind the scenes really are. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, the prequel trilogy sets that up to tell us, but... You are right. Like in the uh, when the, when all we had was the original trilogy, you just seen all the Empire was bad. Every stormtrooper was bad. But more right. and more recently, with the likes of John Boyega's stormtrooper character uh, Finn, uh, he's a stormtrooper. Whether he's undercover, we don't know yet. But the likes of the book I'm reading just now, uh, Aftermath, which we're going to talk a bit about later. Um, there's a, there's a, one of the characters, Singer, has switched sides during the Battle of Endor. So it it shows a lot more that they are just normal. Wait, wait, people. who it's switches sides? This, this guy called Singer. I can't remember his real name, but he's he's basically he was a stormtrooper on the Battle of Endor, and he killed a rebel and took his outfit and decided to switch sides. Really, that's a pretty yeah. cool twist. Yeah, it's it's quite good. And there's also a bounty hunter in it that used to work for the Imperials and switch sides, and she works for the the Rebellion now. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot more. They're giving them more depth than these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. Because when I was younger, stormtroopers were the bad guys. But yep. now I know they're individuals. Like they're yep. not just uh, the people, like you said, pulling the strings. They are the real villains of the whole show. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of times people just don't want to be on the losing side. They just it's self preservation, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And then you know it's, it or 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 blind loyalty to a king you know, is it's one of those things going on. Now, you know, uh, just a quick tidbit. Bail or- mm-hmm. Organa, to me, looks like Jimmy Smith. But it's voiced <laughs> by Phil Lamar. So that's a little... Dis- uh, that, that, that's uh, weird to me. I'm just going to throw that out there. Phil Lamar's a good voice actor. Though. He is. A- he's, he's, he's in Gears of War, yeah? He, yeah, I think Gears of War and, uh, and some other stuff. Uh, and The name's very... It's like one of those names that's like a household name, but I can't think off the top of my head what he what he's been in. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure is he not Fry from Futurama? Is he? You might be right. Now we have to look it up. Phil Lamar. 
They were both looking it up right now. <laughs> that might be. No, a... it's Billy West. It's Billy West. My mistake. Philip White's been in stuff though. He's got a he's got a resume. I think his resume is up there, like rivaling people like uh, Dave Fenoy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you you you, you could recognize Phil Lamar's face anywhere, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but back to Siege of Lethal, like we were talking. Um, we have uh, the this, this story again is one of the episodes where it focuses mostly on Kanan and Ezra. Like they are the two heroes of the piece. Um, and it, as as the as the story goes along, I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, until they try and escape the Imperial headquarters and Darth Vader appears and uh, Kanan feels the anger and the hatred and they have a massive fight in the sort of hangar the, where the, the ships all are and you actually see how sh you'd, you've not really seen Darth Vader in the films or anything else strong you've seen him beat Obi-Wan Kenobi and yeah sure you've seen Anakin in Revenge of Revenge of the Sith and before, but as Darth Vader, you've not really seen too much apart from slow walking, menacing looking. When he fights Kanan and Ezra, and he's taken them both on, but basically he could have had one hand cut off again. You know, it <laughs> just shows you how strong Vader actually is. I don't know if you thought that, but yeah, no, he was fighting one hand. Like he yeah. he wasn't even trying to like block their attacks. He was just kind of dodging them casually. Like it was like yeah. he was just. Totally trying to leverage the fact that, like, yeah, we're leagues, uh, be you know, apart in, as far as skills go. Yeah. I mean, he even tells Ezra, uh, your master failed you by telling you you could ever become a Jedi. Like, damn. Yeah. Smack down yeah. his dreams, why don't you? <laughs> yeah. And he gives his, he cuts Ezra, he puts him, uh, uh, he throws him to the wall and... It's just, it's insane. Like, I think, is it the end that Kanan pops up and uh, force blasts Darth Vader back? Uh, or he pulls something on his head and that's the only way they can escape? Yeah, so the uh, Sabine and Zeb uh, are throwing some of the uh, timed charges on uh, the yeah. support beams of the, the walkers. And, yeah. uh, and then it, it comes crashing down on Vader and then... Um, Ezra and 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 it took Ezra and Kanan together to force push him back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, but then then you've got a Padawan being trained by someone who never finished his training, uh, so that's 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 another thing. But I mean, it took them both still to push Vader back, and even at that point, with all the stuff falling on him, Vader still got up after it walked out the flames. Yeah, he still like managed to do like a clutch save and do a force push. Just as yeah. everything was crashing down on him. Yeah. Oh, man. And then, obviously, we have to talk about the part. You see a shot of the ship. Uh, is it in the ghost Ahsoka is? Where she feels the presence, obviously, of Vader. And she realizes that Anakin isn't dead. And she actually realizes who Anakin is now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They both recognize almost simultaneously. Except, again, Vader senses her... And recognizes yeah. that's that's his pupil, his Padawan, and then, um, but it took Ezra and not Ezra, um, ah, oh, what's her name? You said it, Ahsoka. 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 And um, yeah. I always might get her name wrong. Ahsoka and um, Kanan together, honing their force together to sense him out. Mm -hmm. You know, but the thing is, Ezra don't Ezra and Kanan don't know. I, I, I guess they never met Anakin. Their paths never crossed. I I, I guess. And, no, uh, no, they went off. Because Anakin would have been Darth Vader by the time, uh, yeah, because Ezra was born the same day as Luke and Leia, so uh, Darth Vader uh, was who Anakin was the day Ezra was born, and obviously Kanan knew who Anakin was. He must have at some point, but obviously I don't think he knows that Anakin is Darth Vader now. Because, yeah, it hasn't dawned uh, upon him yet. No, because he, he wasn't sure who he was. And obviously, Kanan was a, a Jedi Padawan for a very short time, but yeah. he would have known Anakin, and he would have known it was Anakin that killed all the younglings, so... Oh, that's true, yeah. But he also, so, but they both felt the cold. That's what he kept saying, I, yeah. feel, I feel cold. I feel yeah. cold, uh, something cold. Like, that's the darkness they were sensing, like, that is imposing presence. I just love when they kept doing that, and as the closer they got to him, it's like, there's that cold again. It's like, yeah, yeah. he's coming. <laughs> yeah, it was it was the sort of um, 
Yeah, you know that's Darth Vader, but they weren't sure what it was. And obviously, as we know, Kanan hadn't used his Force powers for like quite a while. Um, but it was when Ahsoka realized who it was, and she just kind of had this look on her face. It was it, it just sent chills. It was unreal, and I don't know if she'll tell them because did she tell them by the end of this episode? It's been a few months since I've seen it. Did she say? I don't think she. I don't no. think she told them it was Anakin. No. No, because I, I, I like she had that. There was a moment where. Um. Oh, got Hera and and the gang reunited with uh, Ezra, um, and 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 them that were already in that one transport, and uh, Hera made some kind of joke, and Ahsoka t- turned around and and and, and kind of smiled, but then she, they she turned back around so they couldn't see her face. She had that look on her face like, oh man, we're screwed, you know. Yeah. So she's probably not gonna tell them so they don't worry. Because they're already, yeah, is... you know, kind of doubting themselves. Well, mainly, it's mainly Kanan that's kind of like, we can't win this battle. Let's just run. Let's just be, you know, let's just be rebels and, and hide and, you know, outcasts. Yeah. And you he, know? he, yeah, he wasn't wanting anything to do with the soldiers, as he put it. And like, yep. where it's more Hera that's wanting to be part of the bigger cause. Now, do yeah. you think part of me feels like they're trying to make you think that maybe it's ego, like he doesn't want to take orders from anyone else? Well, I think it's part of that, but I also think it's part fear because of the Clone Wars, which happened obviously yeah. after. After the, I think it's the whole the, the memories of the bad times for him that he, he's more comfortable with the the scum and villainy of the universe, if you will, rather than um, dealing with another war. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely more that. But they make they make they lead you to believe that you know it's like oh he's he has to be the lead, he has to be in the forefront, but it's not. that. I think he's. It's more that selflessness in him. He's, he's that noble desire in him, and I don't think he sees this war as no, as a noble thing. He rather just you know steal from the rich and bring to the poor kind of thing. But by the way, uh, Phil Lamar has done a lot of stuff. Uh, he's done Drawn Together. He's done Batman, car- the Batman cartoons. He's done a bunch. He did Clone Wars. He was he did the voice a lot multiple characters on Clone Wars. He's been around. So yeah. <laughs> good lord, he's got a bit of a resume. Even X Men stuff. That's thought I share that. So yeah, he's he's got a very recognizable voice if you really listen. Yeah, I I do like him. I I did like Billy D. Williams as Lando when he was there. He was Billy D. It's recognizable, but you can tell he's older than he obviously is. But you can hear it in his voice that he's older than he was when he played him in uh, Empire. It, it you know I also feel like they made Lando extra sassy for the for the yeah series. they did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember him being that sassy before. No, it was almost um, to the point of um, Sulu Sassy. I almost expect him to be like, hello, you know? <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. And it was I, great. I, I, and the way that he was chatting up Hera and she was having none of it, I, I, I liked it all. No, um, yeah, and she tried to, like, bargain with him, and she's like, uh, so he's, so what do you got to trade? Because they needed uh Did we get to that part yet? Am I jumping ahead? I might be jumping ahead. No, no, no. So they want to try to escape the planet. Uh, you know, they they figure there's gonna be a, an imperial blockade, so they need a, you know they figure they need to hit up a smuggler, and one of the suggestions even hinted upon. She's like, no, not him, and they contact Lando, and then you know he's bar- so he's like, well, I'll, I'll help you out, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll smuggle you off the planet, but uh, what do you got to trade? And then she's like, well, we got uh, military grade shield generators. He's like, oh, <laughs> how many? She goes, oh, we got two. It's like, you are not a gambler, Hera. So if you say you got two, I bet you got like six. So I'm going to take half of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did like, I, I do like it. Um, but we'll need to move off of uh, Star Wars Rebels and return to it uh, once the season begins. But like I said, for full reviews, uh, rebelscast.co.uk. Um, our next topic. What is what does it say under Rebels two season two premiere, Yogi? Oh, uh, it's supposed to say spoilers, but this font is really janky. Apparently, mm-hmm. <laughs> spoilers. Darth, Ra- Darth. Why did it put that? I may have mistyped that. Good catch. <laughs> no, spoilers. it's the, no, it's the font. The font doesn't like. Uh, <laughs> it's spoilers. Darth, Darth Vader. We already mentioned the spoiler. Awesome. So yeah. our next. Our next topic has to be. <laughs> that's just, that's an that's an official Star Wars font, and it doesn't like certain characters or a uh, case. Apparently, there you go. Now, it, 
That's so weird. I put a capital V and it puts a R. Darth Vader. That's like Jap the Japanese version. Oh, hello. That's racist. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I fixed okay. it. Good catch. So, um, The Force Awakens, movies, toys, and Force Friday. Force Friday was uh, Friday there. Friday the 4th. Uh, and uh, that's when the worldwide unleashed all the Star Wars movie toys. Well, most of them, I'll say. Because I still can't get a hold of the Force FX lightsabers. Um it could be because they're sold out, but I think they're releasing next year. Uh, they released the figure waves, the Black Series, the Lego toys. Basically, Unleash the Hounds happened. And not not where I stay, because uh, there's not many places here, but up in Glasgow, in the Disney store down in London, John Baega and... Uh, What's her name? Daisy Ridley. She, uh, the both of them turned up for the queue waiting at midnight for the toys, which is pretty cool. Wow! So it's a big, it was a big, yeah. uh, big thing. Yeah, it was a big thing. They'd done a worldwide unboxing for each of the figures from a different country when it hit midnight. So like. You had the unboxings of some of the 3.75 inch figures in one place and then they moved on and you had some of the models of the ships, some of the Lego stuff. It was pretty awesome. Did you pick up anything in Force Friday, Yogi? I, I have to stay away from collectibles because as it is, I got rid of a lot of stuff uh, yeah. to make room and, and uh, generate some funds too and not get screamed at by the wife. But uh, yes. amongst that, which is sad... And uh, this uh, the Force Friday thing reminds me of when Sega Saturn came out and they had uh, Saturn Day. Remember that whole thing, that whole debacle? Yep. That was. Yep. And also, I remember further back Sonic Tuesday, and it was the Tuesday Sonic Two came out. And, well, that that went well, but Saturn Day mm. was a debacle because they they released the Sega Saturn early and pissed off a bunch of retailers and distributors and the developers. That's when EA finally started falling out with Sega. And uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, I I I, I had uh, a Sega Saturn with a bunch of limited distribu uh, limited edition games like uh, Pass Dragoon Saga, Mint, uh, yeah. Guardian Heroes. Well, that's that's worth a fortune now. Yep. <laughs> yep. <sighs> so I'm kicking myself. So now I think it just out of sp yeah, I was just gonna stay away from collectibles because it. If, like, something happens and one of the kids, you know, accidentally, I don't know, leaves a toy on the floor or, and the dogs get to it, I, I'll have a fit. So I'd rather not put myself in that position. <laughs> I want to, well, though. I, I want to so bad. I, have you have you checked out our friends at Uncanny X Bros? No, I don't think I have. I'll send you a... Oh, you're not doing Facebook at all anymore, are you? No. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they have a Facebook group, and and the, all they've been doing is sharing like uh, that's why that's why I didn't send you an invite because you're not on Facebook anymore. I was gonna shoot you an invite, but uh, you would you would you'd love the stuff in here because they're sharing a bunch of collectibles that they keep grabbing and seeing in stores, and Star Wars was part of that, and they were getting into it. I'm like, ah, I'm getting so jealous. Like, no, I must stop myself. What did you, what did you pick <laughs> well, up though? Uh, well, we're going to talk about Disney Infinity after, but I've got the first wave of the Disney Infinity figures. Um, but the one th I only really picked up one thing for Force Friday, and it was the one that I had my eye on for a while. It was the, you know, the Sphero RB88? Yes. <laughs> um, I had to order that. It just it looks amazing. These are the guys that made RB88 for the movie, and the cool thing is I was watching an interview with one of the guys that works for them, and he said what had happened was uh, Disney took them on. I think they're owned by Disney Sphero, but... Um, he said that the Star Wars guys were looking at the Sphero, the original Sphero, and said, this is cool, can we show you some mock-ups and there's some pictures of RB-88? And they asked him, can you make that work? And that's what they've done. That was the RB-88 you've seen rolling out on uh, the Star Wars Force Celebration weekend. Yeah. Um, they've actually made this available for people. Um, so what it is, is basically it's like a virtual pet almost. Yep. And uh, it's insane the way it works. It's a ball with the magnets keep the head on. Um, and it works through your smartphone so you can control them and you can make them move about but you can put them in patrol mode where he'll go about bump into things he'll figure out your room almost like a Roomba yeah um but this 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 is one of the nicest and 
best things I've seen Star Wars bringing out. I mean, how many people in the seventies would have loved an R two version of this? You and know? with, this, with I, the Spheros, they actually level up in the apps. You get you, you unlock different skills and tricks, and the pets yeah. love these things. Yep. So uh, this one, they've also said they're going to update the software with more things. You can record your own hollow messages on it, you know, like R2 did for Princess Leia, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so you use it. It's kind of like a cool AR trick where you record a video and you push play and RB88 will project it like a hollow message. Uh, and obviously there's more features going to be added to them as time goes on because there'll be some things that you won't be able to do because it might be spoilers towards The Force Awakens, right? Um, which is tight lip. But this thing is insane. It's selling out pretty fast. Amazon's got none left here. I had to go and get it from Firebox, so I think I won't get it to probably next week now. But it looks amazing. It How much did that run you? Away. I think over here it's 120. Uh, That's not I bad. Think it's 150 in America, 150 dollars. Yeah, but yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, That's actually really good. Getting. Because uh, I, yeah. I have the basic Spiro and, and it's great, but mm -hmm. it doesn't do nearly as much as that. Yeah. How much is the basic Spiro's? Oh, I don't remember what they're running for anymore. It's, it's, I, I want to say it's in like, it's depending on what model you get, it's like 60 to $100 price range. Oh. So it's not too not too bad for an RB88. Like, it's pretty cool. I've got the app already in my phone. And the cool thing was, uh, Sphero sent me an email saying, uh, after I purchased it, saying this was the droid I was looking for, which is <laughs> quite a neat touch. Um, I'm looking forward to getting it and just seeing it running about. Um, I don't know how long I'll be allowed it running about constantly in this house before uh, the wife-to-be gets annoyed with it and kicks it in the air. But I think she'll think it's pretty cute as well. So they, they, um, they, it's I, really fun, dude. You, you, wait, do you yeah. have any pets? Uh, we, uh, we do. Our mom's got a pet. Um, uh, up at her, she's got a Scotty dog, and it will be fun to see it with that. But I think it would scare our mom's dog more than anything because this is the sort of dog that uh, it barks too much, and I barked back at it one day, and it ran away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think I'll like it. And my mom's got a cat. Uh, I, I used to have a dog, I don't anymore, and Tash used to have a dog too. Um, but we're more thinking about the other sort of pets soon because we're getting married, the, the children pets. Ah, yes. So, yeah. Those are fun. Those are fun. Yeah, they will be, they'll be more fun. Especially um, when you can teach yes, them to, to cook and clean, then they're really good. See if I can get them cooking, cleaning up after us, and just doing the dishes and stuff, then it'll be worth the money we end up spending on them. <laughs> but like having, having your own like personal midget cleaning crew. <laughs> there you go. That's what we did it for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, on Force Friday, like I said, I got Disney Infinity. Like I'd been waiting a while to before I pulled the trigger on this. Um they had the Marvel set. The, the Marvel set out before, which uh, obviously I'm a Marvel fan, but and this it just is Disney, wasn't for me. This is Disney Infinity. This is like the third edition, the 3.0, right? Yeah, 3.0. And like, you know me, you know me in Star Wars, Yogi. And when it came to that, I just, I couldn't not pull the trigger. And there's a very good reason for that that I'll get to in a minute. Um, but Disney Infinity 3 as well also had the best reviews. Uh, you had Ninja Theory from Devil May Cry doing the combat. You had Sumo Digital from Sonic Racing doing the racing in it. And it shows. Um, wow. The figures, I got, yeah, I got the special edition, right? Um, so I got the standard uh, Twilight of the Empire. Yeah, Twilight of the Empire, which comes with Ahsoka, Anakin, and your disc. And I also got the Rise Against the, what was it? Twilight of the Rebellion. I cannot remember the names of these, but anyway, I got the other set, which has Luke, Leia, and the Death Star play piece, and that came with Boba Fett, which isn't released anywhere else yet, so that's awesome. Um, and also in Wave 1, I've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, obviously, Yoda, Ezra, Kanan, Sabine, and Zeb. Um, now, obviously, I've got like quite a big Star Wars collection as it is, uh, and I've got the entire Rebel... Well, Hera's on her way. Still hasn't arrived. I'm really disappointed with Disney and their availability and the characters. Like, I know there's a big thing going on about females need more of the limelight, but it's not even that. Sabine's getting plenty of the limelight. Hera is just... She's not even in Disney Infinity. When I put the game in, it actually came up saying, link to a Disney account, so I signed up, because I didn't have one, and it said, this is the only way to get Hera in the toy box. Oh, I it's was really so weird. Cause... Hera's a very a really good character. Yeah. yeah, it makes no sense because they've got Kanan, Sabine, Ezra, and Zeb. I, I mean, you know, it's just I can understand Chopper because they've not got any other droids, but I mean, not having Hera, 
So uh, with my 3.75, the mission series Star Wars figures that I've got, I've got the Kane and Ezra and Obi-Wan Force Ghost pack, the first one that came out. I've got Chopper, the Inquisitor, um, Sabina and Stormtrooper and Zeb and Stormtrooper. Over here, it is almost impossible to get Hera. And I had to actually go to, it was the American Amazon I had to use to order Hera over here. That's, it's unrealistic <coughs> to expect people just to collect four out of the five. And like, I know Disney view it as the princess line is all for the girls and Star Wars is for the boys. But I mean, they've got to understand that our collectors and young boys might end up turning around saying, why can't I buy Hera? So it's kind of disappointing that Disney have done that. And I hope that they rectify that by giving Hera some more um, coverage and more figures and stuff. Because it, it almost looks ridiculous, the fact that I've got the ghost crew, obviously minus Chopper, but without Hera, you know? Mm, I don't know if you've noticed that in store shelves, but over here it's almost impossible. Um, but yeah, back to the Mission Series figures. The look of them is almost in line with your normal Star Wars figures, like your um, <clears throat> Star Wars vintage ones or whatnot. Uh, however, the cool thing about Disney Infinity is because it's such a close look to Star Wars Rebels, they're almost show accurate, the figures. Um, so they actually look better than their... their um, see, quote-unquote collectible counterparts, if you know what I mean. So mm. I've got Ezra sitting here looking more like he does in Rebels than his action figure does. So they're going to look good. Like, the way that I wasn't going to get them, and then I thought, even once I do finish the game, there's still the Force Awakens set coming out, and obviously whatever next year's one brings, and there's the Marvel one that you can get. But I'm only collecting the Star Wars ones um, because they'll go in my collection, but these figures will look good. In a, I'll say they look good in a shelf just the way they are, even without the game. Um, the the way that they've redone, they've gave Leia, uh, Ahsoka, and Luke, uh, the way they've modelled them looks almost as if they've just walked out of a Rebels episode, which is very promising that they might end up appearing at some point. I highly doubt it, but you could <laughs> see like them in a, in a background shot or something, you know. Look, you said... We, we did have Luke Starkiller, uh, the original design for Luke Skywalker in the first episode of Rebels, if you remember, walking through the marketplace from George Lucas' drafts. So, you never know. But anyway, uh, on to Infinity. Uh, I was playing through it uh, on Extreme because obviously easy I could have finished the entire game in a day because it's designed for children. But with Extreme, <laughs> they've actually, I, I actually died quite a lot in it. I died several times in a mission rescuing Jar Jar Binks, okay? So I wasn't happy about that, even more so the fact that of who I was rescuing. Um, I was playing through it, and these... <laughs> I don't I don't know who it was. It was just like uh, gangsters were coming up trying to ca kill Jar Jar, and I felt like stepping aside going, just just do it, you know? Aw, poor Jar Jar. I didn't want him as much, but Samuel Jackson... Um, sorry, Nick Fury, sorry, what uh, Mace Windu, <laughs> I'm just thinking, Mace Windu <laughs> had sent me on a, messy, uh, a mission to bring Jar Jar to the Jedi Temple, which wasn't too far away, but for people that are gamers like myself, there are, um, there, there's elements to it, there's the RPG leveling up, obviously, of every figure, and the cap, I believe, is 20, the highest I've got is 16 with Obi-Wan, um, they do feel stronger as you progress, and the cool thing with, like, the Rebels figures is, um, on the skill trees, Ezra's force powers are higher up so it takes them longer to be to be get the force powers as it would in this series uh, right. and the other cool thing is they're also based on their season two looks like kanan's got his design on his uh, armor on his right arm and sabine looks slightly older and ezra's got his scars from when he was fighting the inquisitor oh that's pretty cool yeah, so all these figures look really good. They do. They will be going on my Star Wars shelf once I've finished up the games. But obviously, the Force Awakens set arrives, and uh, I'd imagine it's going to be December because the Luke and Leia set isn't out till October, which came in my special edition. Um, and with that, when it arrives, you're getting Darth Maul, Vader, Han, and Chewie. So those are the only ones that I don't have outside the Force Awakens. 